Hello fellow lovers of the liminal and the weird and welcome to another video by Liminal Spaces. Today I wanted to go over all the titles in my science fiction library that are under the letter M. All uh, uh, writers who have the last name with the letter M. And I don't know if I'm going to have to break this into two uh, pieces. We'll see. I'm going to start with all the stuff I have under M, the, excepting for Michael Moorcock. Uh, Michael Moorcock, I have a lot of his stuff, so that might have to be its own video. We'll see how far I get with uh, with just going over the other M's in my library. So first we have The Man Who Awoke by Lawrence Manning, which I've talked about at great length on this channel. This is an incredible uh, fix-up novel of short stories about a man that keeps putting himself to sleep and waking up 5,000 years further into the future. Um, this is the first, the earliest book I know of from the early 30s that talks about people hooked up to machines that give them fake lives, like the Matrix idea. Uh, really, really fun stuff. Lawrence Manning, a Canadian writer. If you haven't uh, read him, check him out. Next, we have The Time Connection by Thomas F. Monte Monteleon. I don't know if this is a uh, book in translation. I'm not familiar with this writer. Really good uh, condition here. It's got a cool cityscape with a tank on the, the front. Doesn't say who, who did that cover for us, but I really like that cover. A man and a woman on a perilous passage to nightmare future er Earth. I like that idea. So I kept it just for that tagline. Next we have The Trees of Zarka, a science fiction novel by Nancy Mackenroth. The Earth colonists were doomed in a grim tomorrow until one man defied the powers that enslaved them. This artist looks familiar to me. Hopefully they tell us who it is. They absolutely do not, which is too bad. I feel like I've seen a painting like this on a Zelazny hardcover. I don't know who this artist is, but looks very good. Tiltingle? Tiltingle? If the ice forest killed him, no one would survive. This is by R.W. McElworth. Got a bunch of people frozen in ice on the cover there. This is Ballantine. Hopefully they'll tell us. Cover art by John Berkey. Catherine McLean, The Diploids, and three other stories. Never heard of her either. But uh, the diploid sounds like it could be fun. This is a manor book. It does not tell us who did the front cover. The diploids dash die freak is the actual name of the story. We'll have to see how this is. Here's another one by R.W. McElworth. The Diabols. This is in good condition. The original title was Fire Mantle, so this is a reprint. It's not going to tell us who did that front cover, but it looks interesting. Were they nightmare creatures or mankind's final enemy? Harold Mead, The Bright Phoenix. This is an earlier uh, Ballantine book, 35 cents. On the back it is... Oh, that's interesting. This is probably why I kept this. On the back, this says 1951, the day of the Triffids. And that's Wyndham, of course. And then it says 1953, Childhood's End. And that's Clark. And then it says 1956, The Bright Phoenix. So this book is trying to put all those together, I guess. Trying to compare Harold Mead with uh, Clark and Wyndham. I'm not familiar with Harold Mead. If you are, let me know what you think of him. This book was 35 cents when it came out in 1956, of course. And it does not tell us who did the cover art. But it looks interesting. Just those name drops on the back I, I thought were really interesting. Next we have The Dark Millennium by A.J. Merrick. With a picture of a person with a tail on it. In the back it says, Experiment in the Great Void. During the thousand years when Earth was overrun by barbarians, a strange experiment was being conducted deep in space. Copyright 1969. Does not tell us who did that really cool cover. It is signed. Alvera? I can't read that signature on the cover. We'll be able to zoom up on it. This guy's number is 5048, I believe. Looks really interesting. I'm excited to get a, give it a read. Another A. Merit. From the fantastic, oh, 
This is from the Fantastic Worlds of A Merit. Seven Footprints to Satan. Scary. And then on the back it says, Seven Steps to Satan's Slaves. I don't know what's going on this. It looks kind of occulty and scary. So I kept it. Wow, the copyright on this is 1928. I wonder if these are the same person. This is A.J. Merrick. Oh, these aren't the same person. This is A. Merrick. This is a new writer. I'm sorry. I, I mistakenly thought these were the same people. They're completely different people. So A. Merritt, this copyright is 1928. I feel like I have read a story by A. Merritt. I know of this name, but I, I'm, I'm pulling a blank. I can't, uh, I can't figure it out right now. Cover illustration by Doug Rosa. Another A. Merritt, The Face in the Abyss. Danger in a Forbidden Valley of the Andes where a strange race has conquered death. I don't know, it sounds really cool. Copyright 1931 on this one. It does not tell us who the cover artist was. Not a lot going on that cover either way. So another A merit. I've got a few by this uh, by this person. The Moon Pool. The ultimate in science fiction. No real tagline for this. This is an Avon book. And boy, they are not telling us much. Including who did that cover. There is a signature on that cover, but I can't tell. The Moon Pool. Next is The White Windows by Sam Merwin Jr. Irresistible to men, they planned a monstrous one-sex world. There's a crazy photograph of a skull on the front there. It doesn't tell us who did that crazy skull on the front cover there, but that looks crazy fun. Another Sam Merwin Jr., The Time Shifters. Tomorrow's war is fought on the battlefields of yesterday, soldiered by misfits from today. Time travel stuff. Lancer, not telling me who did that cover. Cool cover, though. I know some of you guys can literally just look at one of these pictures and know the style and, uh, and see who it is. Very cool. It says cover printed in the USA, but doesn't tell me who the artist is. Next we have C.L. Moore and Henry uh, Kut Kuttner. Kuttner, I think is how you say his name. This is an ace. It's 40 cents. And boy, this is in really good condition. Earth's Last Citadel. I really loved uh, C.L. Moore and Henry Kuttner's um, short story in the Science Fiction Hall of Fame, which was called Mimsy, Where the Boar Groves. Absolutely incredible story. So I'm excited to read more by them, which is exactly why I'm keeping everything I have by uh, either of them. Uh, this does not tell me who did the front cover. It is a first edition. This is the first printing of this story. So very cool. Excited to look at that. Next up is Shamblu by C.L. Moore. Got a Medusa looking cover there. I don't know what her hair is made out of. The famous horror fantasy classic. Interesting horror fantasy. Looking forward to this one. I put it in science fiction, but it seems like it should either be in horror or fantasy. Um, let's see who drew that uh, woman with orange hair. Does not tell us. Anyway, I get a real Medusa vibe from that. I like uh, fantasy and I like horror. Hopefully it's mind-bending and strange. We'll give it a check out. Slater's Planet by Harris Moore. I don't know who uh, Harris Moore is. Space explorers from Earth hunting for other life find an odd new planet controlled by two computers. Who built them? Why are they hostile? This makes me think of Star Trek, which is probably exactly why I kept it. Just an uh, early uh, computer. I wonder if they're going to like give it a logic problem that makes the computer blow up. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they usually do. Uh, we'll see. I've never read this. 71 is the copyright. Does not tell me who did that front cover. Next up is Dan Morgan and John Kipax, A Thunder of Stars. It's got a cool spaceship fight going on on that front cover. First printing was May of 1970, and the cover art is by Dean Ellis. 
Dean Ellis is really well known, I believe, for his spaceships. Uh, I think my brother has an entire book on Dean Ellis and just all of his crazy spaceships. So, very cool. Another Dan Morgan and John Kippax. This is Seed of the Stars. And this is the hair-raising sequel to A Thunder of Stars. So, I'm glad that I have both of those. This one's a Ballantine. This series might be the only thing they did. Cover art is by uh, Vincent DeFate. Great cover right there. Next up, a gift from my buddy. Someday I will read this. Richard Morgan's Altered Carbon. Uh, my buddy and I enjoyed the first season of Altered Carbon. I don't know if there's more seasons. He was just trying to tell me about this recently. But anyway, uh, I enjoyed the, uh, the sci-fi concept of this. So... Uh, I'll check this out one day. The thickness of it is what uh, kind of keeps me away. Ever since I've started doing a YouTube channel, in order to keep up with the videos that I need to do, I have a tendency to try to lean towards slightly thinner books, but that's not going to work forever. Eventually, I'm uh, going to have to... I mean, I've and of course, the Mutakami books aren't very thin, and I've done those, so it's doable. I just have to pick weeks that are uh, are good for it. But yeah, someday I will read altered carbon I'm not a huge fan of new sci-fi book covers i'm not a huge fan of new book covers in general all right sam moskowitz seekers of tomorrow first question on the back what is the shape of the future you ask a question like that on the back of the book and i'm gonna i'm gonna give it a try oh man this does not tell me who did the cover looks like a, a collage more than anything Looks very cool. No Man on Earth. Walter Moody. Moody? Moody? A science fiction novel of a strange quest in interstellar space. Looks quite wild. 50 cents when it came out. This is a Berkeley medallion. And it does not say who did the cover art but on the back at the very bottom there's a little advertisement it says you will also want to read jg ballard's the burning world and they're right i do also want to read that in the beginning by john e muller who it was beyond any doubt from outside far away in space and possibly from another dimension too Whoa. vega book 50 cents in the beginning Really good condition for the age here. And I've never heard of a Vega book. Doesn't tell us who did that cover art, unfortunately. It is signed. It looks like Fox H. I don't know. Maybe you guys will know just by looking at it. I don't know. The Oblivion ta uh, Tapes by Tamari Murari. Tamari Murari. Murari. I don't know. I try to turn everything into Japanese because that's the only other language I know. In the nerve-shattering tradition of Robert Ludlum and John Gotti, or Gotti. I don't know, this guy made me think of John Lennon. But he's got tapes for eyes instead of uh, glasses. A tense journey into the bizarre but not impossible future. It does not tell us who did the cover art for that one. All right, that is all of the paper books that I have under M, excluding, of course, Michael Moorcock, who I'll have to do in another video. But here are the hardbacks that I have under M. The first one is Charles Eric Main Alf. And what a wild cover this has. I like this baby with the Thor hammer. Totally crazy. Um, Alpha is set in a distant future when the widespread use of a new birth control tablet has drastically affected the birth ratio of male to females. I don't know. It looks really interesting. And the cover artist is Brad Holland. I can actually read that. Very cool. So that's what I'm going to have to check out. Next is John D. McDonald, Time and Tomorrow. This is an omnibus of three of his novels. Wine of the Dreamers, The Girl, The Gold, uh, The Girl, The Gold Watch, and Everything, Ballroom of the Skies. I don't really know anything about John D. McDonald, but this is a good way to give him a try. This is an artist I've been wanting to try for a while, Vonda uh, N. McIntyre, or McIntyre, The Exile Waiting. I've heard good things about this uh, author, so I'm excited to give her a try. Big one. 
A Canticle for Leibowitz by Walter M. Miller Jr. It's a lot of M's. Cool wraparound cover on this uh, BCE. I don't know if this is, is the cover of the first edition. Usually the BCEs are, but this for some odd reason feels like it was published later. Copyright is 1959. Oh yeah, yeah, this is 1988. So this is a much later copy of A Canto Canticle for Leibowitz. Uh-oh, I forgot a couple of M's. They were hidden back here. I'm glad I looked over here. I also have the best of Walter M. Miller Jr. Uh, just because I really liked Canticle for Leibowitz, I wanted to see what else he had done. Um, and the answer is not a lot. Uh, but there's short stories and stuff in here, so it's awesome. This is a first pocket edition. came out in 1980, so I'm very glad to have that. I'm glad that I looked over there. And my camera just died, and I only had two more. I'm just going to put up the... Uh, the covers over the screen here. Uh, the next one is A Canticle for Leibowitz again, but this is the uh, original paperback, and I think this is actually the first uh, cover of it. I think this is what it looked like, but I don't know. I will look it up when I'm uh, looking through it, but I do have the paperback version of Canticle for Leibowitz as well. And last but not least, I have the best of C.L. Moore, edited by Lester Del Rey. And what an incredible cover this one has. Really cool. There's a wild... We got a Medusa thing going on here. Am I seeing this right? Yeah, I think all the hair on this woman is, uh, is snakes. Uh, really interesting drawing. And... It is, let's see if we can figure out who did it. Mine's a BCE, a book club edition. Came out in 75. They are not telling me who did this cover art, which is too bad because it's cool. Um, yeah. All right, that is all of the science fiction M that I have. Uh, of course, I did not do Michael Moorcock. Uh, I'll have to save him for a, a next part. So there's going to be basically two videos for M just because of how many M's I have in science fiction. All right. If you watch this to the end, thank you very much. If you liked it, please click like. And if you like this kind of content, please subscribe because we'll be making a lot more of it in the future. And thank you so much for watching.